All right, so I've had this excavator for about two two years now. Um, with I don't use it all that often, so it only has about three hundred and just under three hundred fifty hours. But we're gonna do the first batch of maintenance to it. That so oil change, filter change. Um, I've already done some of this stuff, but there's a few bigger projects that we need to tackle, like. Um, the thumb is starting to develop a crack right there that needs to be addressed. Um, this pin that goes all the way through is starting to bend, so I want to replace that. I guess my buddy had a similar issue and he kind of pointed that out to me that I need to watch out for it, and it looks like it's happening to mine, so fix that. There's also some things with some of the bushings that I want to kind of tighten up a little bit if I can. Um, I should say this video is mainly just for my own purposes to document what I'm doing and for future reference. But um, if you own one of these machines, uh, hopefully this might uh, be helpful to you if you need to do some of these operations. Because um, me personally, this is the first machine I've ever owned. So I'm still kind of learning the rope. So there's probably a lot of things I'm doing wrong, but I'm trying to learn the proper way to do things. And you know, the only way you learn is by getting your hands dirty. That's, that's a 13. Okay. 13 mil. <laughs> yep, definitely something within there. That's kind of cool. A little switch. So I discovered a little bit of a trick. So watch the level, I'm gonna pull the dipstick out. Yeah, there you go. I can, I can tolerate that. Let's do the filters. Cool. Okay, so we're about eight minutes later and it's basically done draining.
Jesus. want to go to the auto parts store. All right, I got better gloves. Oh yeah, yeah, these are way better. That is oil filter. 220, Okay, that has been hand tightened. I really like this extra little slot, so you don't have to try to hold it up there. I have to say, Cat does a pretty good job making their stuff user serviceable. There you go. Okay, make sure this is on tight. This were way above the line. I don't know if I believe that. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and start this up for a little bit and then check it again. All right, quick update. So I was texting with my buddy and uh, well, this is the section over here on like the oil change in the manual, which I was like expecting to find the oil quantities. Um, but no, it's uh, not on that page. It's on that page. So yeah, I, or uh, there you go. That's the amount of oil I need. So I did overfill it. I'll have to take some out. All right, I can see that now that I'm more level ground that this is a little bit low. So we want it to be right at that middle level. That's kind of where you want it. Maybe a little bit above.
A little bit of air. Poof. All right, we can already start crossing stuff off. Oil change, done. Um, hydraulic fluid, done. Filters, done. All right, let's move on to replacing this. So. Okay, washer and one of those rings. There you go. Another ring and a washer. This is a good one, pretty nice. Let's go out. this pen yeah check that out I don't know if it's you can tell but let's rotate it yeah you can definitely tell it's bent you're a good kitty I'll touch you but my hands are kind of gross This is on passenger side, quote unquote. Fat guy, thick, thin, thin, fat. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
There we go. All right, let it be known that I've never welded, so don't pick me apart too badly. Bear with me. Learning here. All right. Alright, so it's the next day and you can actually see and look at those beautiful welds. That that is a true job of a craftsman. I think I was running my uh welder a little bit too high. I was watching a few videos after I went in and I think that was my problem. I thought the amperage was supposed to be like in between 90 and like 110, and it turns out um I misread. It's supposed to be in between 60 and 100, so that might be my issue. I don't, know. I don't think I talked about what I'm using. So I'm using this uh, Deco um, welder, which you can literally pick up on Amazon for like 100 bucks. And from what everyone has been saying, it's actually not a bad machine. I figured might as well start with something cheap, see how it goes. And if I find this to be useful, I can then go ahead and pick up, you know, something a little bit better. But because I'm welding some pretty thick material, I'm only working with 110. So uh, this is stick welding seem to be the better of the options um so yeah we're gonna go ahead and uh finish cleaning this up and hopefully uh making a pretty uh project I'm glad I uh, went all the way down because I could tell that there's like big gaps in the weld. So um, I don't know why that is. Definitely has to do with my technique, but hopefully um, we can figure that out and make it work.
All right, so, all right, so my welds yesterday went, uh, they're absolutely abysmal. So I'm gonna try to figure this out today. But I've done more damage than I think I have done good. I've really dug down deep into here. I think it's salvageable, but I'm like really frustrated at myself for doing that. So there's a few things I'm doing different. I got light, because it was really hard for me to see. Secondly, I watched a bunch of videos. Um, there's a few things I could do. There's something called Texas TIG, which is stick welding, and then you use another rod without the um, the flux as filler. I might try that to like fill the gap. Other thing is um, I need to go grab some uh, something to scratch the tips of these on to make sure that the tips of these are nice and clean. And third, um, I'm using a basic uh, cheapo welder and. Uh, from my understanding, the voltage or amperage is highly inconsistent. So you might be calling for, let's say, 60 or 90 amps, but you might not be getting that. So, and uh, oh, the other thing is, I I was dragging and I was looking from this side while I was welding, and I actually saw that they recommended that you weld looking this way as you're welding that way with stick welding so you can kind of uh, see what you're doing a little bit better. So, I think I can do that with this setup. Um, I'm, you might have noticed I moved inside because it's raining outside, so I have uh, a little bit of a refuge in here. But uh, yeah, I'm hoping I can fix this by the end of the day. So let's see how it goes. Already, that is a huge improvement over yesterday.
Alright, so obviously I've uh, ground this down quite a bit, but this is what my welds look like. Um, and obviously this is pretty awful. I I think one of the things that I struggled with the most is a lot of the slag um, wasn't coming off. So, and it was hard for me to tell. I thought I had ground it down or cleaned it off enough in between passes. Every time I would jump around and also like the later and I didn't need to add this plate, but I just wanted, I was getting bored and kind of wanted to try it. But I think, uh, when I got to this point, I was just getting really impatient. And so I wasn't cleaning this off nearly enough. As a result, um, a lot of the slag was still left on it. And when I'd go to weld, um, I don't think the arc was doing a good job, um, uh, staying in place. I, trust me, I've gone and watched a ton of videos already since I've done this. I think I know some of the things I did wrong. And I think uh, uh, doing things the wrong way helps reinforce the reasons why you want to do it the right way. I think there's a lot to learn from doing things the wrong way. And uh, I like to do things, figure out where I'm struggling, go watch some videos, go try to learn a few things come back, try it again, learn from what I watched, and then see where I need to make uh, improvements, so. Did it come this? We got a spacer and then we got a bunch of shims. And I want to measure these shims to see if I can find another source of them because they're actually quite expensive. So, all right, so that seal this out. Internal diameter is about 33. All right, what is that, like 56, 57? Say 57. Okay, this one's probably a mil. I have an extra spacer and I think I'm gonna see if I can wedge it in here. See if I can take up a little bit more slop. Let's see, would this one? Right. 
it might be too thick. Yeah, that guy's a little bit too thick, I think. You need to go on that side. Ooh. Actually, I think I might have an idea. I'm gonna use the old pen. This might actually not be a bad idea. All right, all right. And that is correct orientation. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the pen partially through all right and I dropped the spacer of course where did you go oh, obviously There we go. I like the position of this zerk. It's like a little bit too awkward to get to. This guy, in order to grease it, the bucket has to be all the way up. And when that's all the way up, you can't get to some of the other zerks. So it's a two step operation. It's kind of annoying. So. And replace this. With a 90 degree angle, and I think, ooh, maybe not 90 degree, let's go with one of these. Uh, I've been trying to replace this Zerk and I just don't think that's gonna fly, it sticks out too much. So I'm gonna go back to the standard ones. The squeak. You don't hear it right now, but I need to change the view belt. And that is located 
right there. I think I'm going to have to tilt the cab because I'm not seeing any other way that would make logical sense. This way, up there. Let's sit here. I need to. Where's me? There we go. Fun fact, <clears throat> that's the only way you can actually access the battery. If you need like charge it, that's fine. You can do it uh, by taking off the panel, but if you actually want to replace it, you have to lift up the whole cab. Should be enough tension. if I take it off the bottom. Okay. Is there any other way to release tension? Because I'm not seeing it. OK. 
Okay. Bottom is on the top. Now let's see if we can get it. Okay, it's on. Right below, the, you can see that metal thing, and that's what I was wedging off of. I'm actually wondering if I can get a little bit more tension out of that. I have like this little airbag thing that I've wedged. I don't even know if you can tell. I'm sorry, there's really no good spot to put the camera. Everywhere I put it, it's like kind of in the way. Okay, okay, okay. Again, so hard to get the camera in there and show you what the fuck I'm actually doing. I was able to fit this over that. I didn't really put too much pressure on it, but between that, this airbag thing, and the tire lever, I was able to budge it a little bit. Did we solve the squeak? Yes! Alright. So much better. That squeak was so obnoxious. She was already on the move. Good. Oh yeah, get that grease on you.
All right, the last thing I need to do is change this inline fuel filter. Made in Russia. That's interesting. Why? Are you being stupid? Garrett, there, there we go. Your macro lens came in. Oh, sweet. I wasn't sure if it would be useful right now or not. It almost might. Alright. So, I just got a macro lens. I help out here. If I don't bump into it too many times. Alright, let's see if this fills up when I start priming them. Oh yeah, look at that. Alright, I actually did forget I ordered another fuel water separator, so let's go ahead and change that. Doesn't look like there's any contamination, but very good to do anyway. Alright, so to remove this, I need to twist this Snug. <laughs> All right. And I think when I turn the ignition, this should prime itself. <clears throat>
right, so we got everything that we needed to do fixed. We got the thumb pin changed, we got the thumb welded, we got the oil changed, we got the fuel filters changed, and all the bushings or everything has been re-greased. So this thing is ready to go. Oh yeah, we also did the V-belt. Um, so yeah, I am actually going to be taking this thing on to its first uh, off-site job and I'm pretty excited about it. So that's why I've been doing all this work. I'm gonna be doing some trail building in town and so yeah i'm excited to do it and uh i even got a truck over there to tow this thing now i just need to get a trailer and uh, i'll be good to go so, so i don't know how long it's going to take for me to do this project so um yeah you should see videos from this project on the channel when i get to posting them but um it might take a bit because uh it's a little bit challenging but anyways i'll see you guys then peace